Okay, uh, welcome to part two of creating diagrams. And um, in this section, we're just actually going to look at how to create the exploded axon. And I'm going to focus on uh, how to do the setup, basically, in Rhino. Um, all the export options you probably saw earlier, or you know of uh, how to work with them. So I won't uh, waste too much time uh, going over that. So um, something like this, for example, is the sort of vertically expanded uh, diagram you know, with the different systems and ones that are sitting on top of each other. And they have these sort of aligning uh, guidelines, right? There's registration lines that run through uh, to kind of uh, roughly show you know, how things relate to each other. Um, another example um, is this which is actually exploding in different directions. So you'll have some elements that are going uh, to the right, some to the left, and some upwards, right? And this is really sort of dependent on your particular situation. What is the best option? Now, I will point out that these, the sort of vertical, or if you go for pure horizontal version, uh, tends to work better in the axon view, right? Parallel projection axonometric view. Whereas these sort of exploded ones sometimes uh, tend to work better in the perspective uh, sort of projection view. Okay, so keep that in mind, and that's why we've set up these two different types uh, just for you to kind of see which one uh, works better uh, in your particular situation. All right, so still working with the file that we had earlier. Um, I'm going to make the default layer my active layer uh, just to kind of not mess things up but basically what you want to do is to uh, the idea is that you select uh, by using your layers or if you had grouped them uh, previously that's fine as well that's awesome uh, but select for example this armature layer right click on it select objects which basically selects everything in the armature layer right and we're just basically going to copy it upwards uh, in this case uh, I'm just going to go upwards for now. Now, uh, the sort of way to do that is to hold down the Alt key and drag on the blue arrow, right, which makes a copy like that, right? Now, but the other thing is that when I do this, I tend not to do it in the perspective view. If I know this is the sort of sequence I'm going to, I pick one of like the front or the right, basically one of the side views. And so let's go to, yeah. Let's go to the right view. It doesn't really matter, right? As long as it's a side view, and you know that it's a side view, okay? So same thing, right click on the layer itself and select objects, okay? And hold down the Alt key while you're dragging this vertical. And I'm moving them just enough so like I can get some separation between the original, okay? And then move on to the next one, select objects, and same thing, hold down the Alt key while I'm, hold down Alt key first and then drag the green arrow, makes a duplicate, right? And get some space between them. Uh, some of these you might not, like I know the sort of stair layers, is, it's really small, it might not be actually worth um, sort of separating um, by itself. Um, so let's say scaffolding, it's a bit more substantial. Rip systems, and I'm just sort of for now. I'm just pulling them out, uh, just so I can. Uh, I'm able to separate them out. Okay, and don't worry about the spacing just quite yet. So once you're here, uh, what I do usually is just go through, select them, and Control G to group them. Each and every one. It just makes you know selecting them. A lot easier uh, eventually. So now let's go back to the perspective view and you'll see they're arranged like this. If you go back to this sort of original saved view you can basically well you can do that and zoom out and see select everything zoom to it. See how they're dispersed in space right and basically this will be the sort of base guide. Now, this is the difference where uh, you can actually sort of manipulate. You'll have to decide how much 
overlap because this is going to be the view that you get in the end, right? And I'll just change this to uh, the pen zoom view, just so it's sort of easier to see. Um, so just by dragging the blue arrow, which is the vertical one, and if you're doing a horizontal one, then you basically use you know, the green or the red. Uh, it's the same idea. Um, but because we've grouped it, selecting these are a lot easier now. And just by dragging the blue arrow, you can more easily sort of manage the distance between your elements, right? Now here's the sort of thing that happens with, between, let's say, a, a more perspectival view versus a design uh, with a parallel projection. The parallel projection will kind of force your angles to be more normalized, um, which means like this. Uh, the sort of distance between your elements will be a little bit more even. Um, and so, you know, you might kind of find it sometimes, sometimes uh, easier to kind of find a, a consistent spacing between your different elements, right? The perspective, um, because that's a vanishing point, and depending on your angle, how your things are angled, uh, the, the sort of top will generally be a little larger. It's not as a um, prominent here, but if I change my perspective angle, this is a command, perspective angle, uh, I can change my field of view to something more exaggerated like 30, right? Uh, then you'll see actually, you know, when it's, it's kind of harder to find an angle where things don't overlap, right? And you'll see this gap here, but then like things start to overlap there. And so the sort of distances between these will to not overlap will have to change. And we have a sort of vanishing point that's going downwards, right? Uh, it's it gets even more exaggerated if you kind of exaggerate it, right? So you'll see the sort of uh, exaggeration of the perspectival effect. Now this Changing the perspective angle is particularly good for getting into the interior spaces like that, right? Um, but uh, the normal sort of Rhino default view is 13 point something, uh, but I just kind of use 15. This is the normal Rhino view, right? So as you can see, sometimes it can be sort of hard to put yourself in there. Um, so this is the uh, equivalent to you know having a wide angle lens so if you have 30 then okay you it's far more easier to position yourself and sort of occupy the space okay so that's what you sort of have to um, decide against or for when you're sort of putting something like this together that you know uh, depending on your uh, vanishing point you know these distances might actually have to get you know a lot further for you to kind of avoid this sort of overlap and whether or not that <clears throat> makes sense or not in the grand scheme of things is completely up to you to decide. All right? So I'm going back to the parallel just to keep things uh, simple. All right? Now, um, here's uh, what we're going to do. Now, since things are arranged a certain way, and you don't actually have to do this in the same direction, like, so, for example, these glass panels or... Um, you don't always have to work in the same direction. These can go off to the left, and those, if you sort of explode this, then these guys can go to the right. So you can, you know, go up one direction and then have your pieces pull apart in different directions. Like it's not always in a line. Like okay, so now we want to draw the registration lines uh, in between them. And usually, when I do this, um, you make a new layer. Let's call it dotted. And, uh, I don't know. Make it bright red. It's not going to show up in this view, but it'll show up in the shaded. So then you can, the reason I do copies is that it's kind of easier if you have things in some, uh, one of this, a copy in its original location, it's easier for me to kind of see where things were, right? And in this uh, sort of situation, um, what I do is I basically use the line tool l spacebar uh, is my shortcut but it's basically line l-i-n-e and 
uh, draw them in, draw the relationships in. Basically, if um, you're looking at this, then you draw these lines in, right? These sort of registration lines in. This one in particular, you can see the nodes that this was actually done in SketchUp, right? Um, but you have to make your dotted line layer active. So use the L key and say, well, okay, you know, some of these lines, they were originally correlated more or less vertically. Uh, make sure your object snap is on and not off, right? So when it's bright like this, it's on. Make sure your end snap here is on. Okay, um, and so you can actually just draw these lines in uh, very quickly. And I'm just going to draw thing, a couple in um, as a sort of token. And I think I actually accidentally uh, did I move that? No. And maybe these lines project through, maybe they don't. Um, doesn't really matter. And you just sort of have to decide um, how you want them to correlate in a way that makes sense. Okay, whatever. I'm just going to draw a couple there as a token so you kind of see what I mean. All right. Now the next thing is um, these lines are not actually um, dotted, which is a problem. Um, they're coming in as solid lines, right? So what you have to do is here in the line type that's right next to uh, this sort of layer, you can make it click on it and actually change it. So I guess normally you want to do this sort of hidden line type. The other thing you'll notice that I have to zoom in very far actually to see the dotted lines. If your scale is incorrect, they kind of blend together. This is the sort of wrong line type scale, right? Um, so what you'll have to do besides changing the line type is that you'll have to change the line type scale. So what you want to do is actually just sort of select the whole layer, right? This is the layer that's using that line type. So select objects. These are all of those. And type in set line type scale. Oops. Uh, here, set line type scale. And here in the new line type scale, you can pick a number that's basically larger. So let's try six. Okay, so it's sort of spread apart a little, but you probably just want to do it at the sort of uh, level of what your diagram is really going to be to get a better sense of, you know, is that an appropriate scale or not, right? So usually what I do is I select everything. Um, I sort of revert back to, and you can set the view again, you know, you can arrange it and say, okay, this is the angle I want, and save a new view. Um, and uh, zoom out, and zoom to it, that. Okay, so I'm going to save as uh, diagram exploded. Get a new one, okay. So, Looking at that, and maybe I'll change this to the uh, pen sort of view, and maybe we'll change that back to black, okay? Or maybe not, maybe red is fine. Uh, it depends on what you want, right? So you look at that and say, well, maybe that's still too small. So select all, whoops, no. Select objects, right click, select objects, set line type scale. Six. Well, let's uh, double that maybe and do 12. Okay, and see, okay, you know that at the scale of this sort of drawing, that looks kind of decent. Okay, now uh, the other thing you can really do, and you'll, you will have to probably export this as a pretty large, you know, if you're just going to use the viewport export, you're going to have to pro export this pretty large. However, uh, because these sort of lines will be a little bit thick. And you see a lot of this sort of uh, the lines blurring into each other. However, don't forget that you can right click here, go to your display options. And for any sort of these newer ones that you've made, uh, you can go into the subcategories, right? Objects, uh, points, curves, and set actually the curve 
uh, width. I think one is actually the smallest in this case, um, but you can still change some like hidden line widths and things like that. Um, but just make sure to export it really big. Um, and also you can, and you know, we can sort of zoom in a little bit closer to see uh, this effect. But display options. So the sort of newer pen setting that I had, you can turn on or off, right, the hidden lines. Uh, within the hidden lines themselves, uh, if you go to the lines, you can change the hidden line width. So if I had uh, here, I, if I turn on the hidden lines, then I can go here and then, you know, make the hidden lines a little thinner um, or, you know, change the, the sort of scale, things like that, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, so there's a lot of settings actually that you can use um, to tweak, you know, all this. Right. So just sort of remember that you can tweak all this stuff. Okay. But um, sort of that's the setup for something like this. Uh, it's very simple. You know, pull things apart, draw lines in between them, and just sort of prepare it. But then the sort of export options are the same as the previous video. Uh, you can just export it like this and color it in. You can uh, render each sort of parts. Um, these parts are already pulled apart, right? So pulled separately. So you can just sort of render that um, as a whole, uh, overlay the line work. Uh, you can export or make 2D as well if you desire. Uh, so you can sort of just do that and make 2D uh, the whole thing. It'll take a little longer because you're sort of calculating. Basically, you would probably be calculating more stuff. Um, so I go go to the top view, and so you'll get a flat diagram like this, right? Which is actually, in some ways, might be easier for you to work with in Illustrator, right? Um, and these lines uh, will come in as well, and you can change the dotted lines in Illustrator. Or, uh, you can you know, shade this in and illustrate it a little bit more easily because there's not so much crap sort of intersecting with it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then even within Illustrator, you can sort of group those and actually if you want to overlay them, you can basically move them back into place if you need sort of in that view where it sort of corresponds, right? So uh, there's a lot of flexibility in different directions that you can uh, take this, all right? So you can do this version, you can do the vertical one, you can do the sort of more horizontal exploded one. Uh, it's really up to you and the scheme that you uh, basically decide to go with. And that's it for this video.